Hi everyone and welcome to the Scrap and Create YouTube channel. It's Christine here and I am back with part three of my Stamperia Wonderland 7x7 mini album tutorial. By now you should have completed your book, binding, pocket pages, and in part two we did the customization of the, park, of the pocket pages. In this part, part three, we will be decorating the pages with this gorgeous paper from Stamperia. This is the fun part. This is so much fun. So let's go ahead and get started. One thing that I would advise you to do before you start cutting up any design paper, and I think I mentioned this in my earlier tutorials as well, this is actually the first thing I do uh, before I even start cutting chipboard or anything for my mini albums is that I pick out which sheets I, of paper I want for my cover of my book, my spine, and my back cover. That way I can set those three sheets of paper aside and I know that I won't accidentally cut into them while I'm working on other pages and doing the design work for the album. I also set aside, if there's cut aparts in the collection or tags or something like that, I set those pages aside as well. One of those pages, usually you get two. For uh, this paper collection, you get a page of cut aparts, a page of, um, and a page of tags. So I set the two of one uh, each of those aside as well, just so I would have them and wouldn't accidentally cut into them. All right. So with those tips in mind, let's go ahead and get started decorating the inside of our album. I always save the outside of my album for last. So when I come back and do the walkthrough, I will show you the album all put together because I'll be adding, you know, flowers and some other fun things to the cover. But this is what I picked for my cover. I also decided to back it with a little bit of this pretty bluish cardstock that I thought went nice with the collection. So that's my cover. Here's my spine, and this is going to be my back cover. And again, you'll see it all come together during the walkthrough of this finished album. But these are the papers that I went ahead and set aside, and then I cut them down to the correct size for the covers and spine. So I'm going to set those aside and now let's go ahead and begin with our decorating of the inside of our album. I went ahead and already added my pages to my album which I talked you through in I think video one and two. It's really easy once you get the pages done you simply dry fit them on the hinges first make sure everything fits okay and then once it fits you just take the tape off of the tape backing off of the hinges and put your pages on. So all of my pages are now attached to my book. I also added a bunch of magnets. I'm going to add a couple on camera just so you can see how that process is done. But let me go through and show you the ones that I have added so far. So I added a magnet here at the bottom right corner of this right flap on page one and then one here as well. And then we're going to add one to this flap here so this stays nice and tidy. So the way that we're going to do that is I use these basic gray magnets. These are from Scrap and Create. They come in two different sizes, the small and a large size. I almost exclusively use the small size, but the large size might be good if you had a bunch of thick paper that you needed to magnetize together. I haven't had a design that I've come up with that's needed that, so I haven't used the large magnets. I just stick with these small ones here. But um, again, it wouldn't hurt to have a pack of the large ones in your stash just in case you end up with a design idea or concept where you need to magnetize a bunch of papers together. All right, so all you do to do, get, do your magnet work is you get a positive and a negative from the package. They have a sticker on the back that you remove, which makes it sticky. You go ahead and stick it down to where you want one magnet placed. So I have mine right up here on the back of this flap. I'm going to now take the negative and attach it correctly in the right direction to this flap. I'm now going to peel the backing off of it. Remember this is self-adhesive so it's sticky and then I'm going to close the flap. Once the flap is closed, give it a little press, lift up and your magnets are in the perfect position. What I like to do at this point is I grab my 3 eighths of an inch score tape and I like to put a piece of score tape over each magnet. This will help firmly make sure that these magnets don't move around and they are embedded in place and they're not going to move. When it comes time to add our design paper, we will remove that score tape backing and then uh, put our design paper right on top. All right, so this is how page one works. All right, here's page two. I decided to do a ribbon closure for um, 
page two for this flap to this flap. So I added some score tape to remind me, and I will show you when we start decorating this page how to, how to do the ribbon closure. I then added a magnet to this large uh, flap that accommodates six by six space. So I went ahead and added that, and then this, like I said, this is gonna be a ribbon closure. For page three, I added a magnet here for this little flap. I added a magnet here for this flap, which shares with this flap. See that here, how these, this little flap and this one share this base magnet here? So everything stays nice and tidy. And then this large flap has a magnet as well. So this actually goes like this like so. So page three is all nice and tidy. I do tend to overuse magnets. You really don't need all of the magnets that I have used. This, for example, when you put, and I'm just going to grab a little tag from the collection, when you put something in this pocket, that can serve as your closure. So you really don't need a magnet here. I just really like to use them um, so that everything just kind of stays nice and tidy. It's just my personal preference, but Again, you do not have to do that if you don't want to. This is page four where we're gonna have that closure, um, where we have that extra square piece, if you recall from part two, and I'll show you how to do that uh, when we get to page four. I put a magnet here on this flap. Page five, I put a magnet on the bottom here of this right flap, and then here on the left flap, as well as the inside left flap, which shares with the large flap here. Does that make sense? So those share, again, I put more than you need, so you do not have to use as many magnets as I did. For page six, I just used three magnets. These two flaps share a base magnet, and then there's one on each flap, so they close up nice and neat like that. Page seven, we just used two magnets for that one little flap there. Page eight, we're gonna go ahead and add our magnets here now. I'm gonna use four on this page. So I, I did some off camera, so we didn't spend too much time going over magnets, but I did want to do a couple on camera just in case those, if there's any people that are new that don't know how to adhere the magnets, I wanted to make sure that I explained how to do this. So since I'm going to use four magnets, I'm grabbing two positives and two negatives, okay? And then I can just set my little packaging there aside. I'm going to go ahead and grab a positive. I'm going to take the backing off so it's sticky and then add that to this little flap right here. I'm going to take a negative that matches and attach it to the magnet there so it's properly hooked up to that magnet and then take the backing off and then stick it down, give it a little press and boom, your magnets are exactly where you need them to be, which is perfect. I'm going to grab that 3 eighths of an inch score tape now and I am just going to make sure these guys stay in place with just some extra adhesive. Now what I'm going to do is I'm going to come to the top of this flap here. I know it's a little hard to see on camera because uh, once it's opened, it's very large. But I'm going to go ahead and peel the backing off of a positive magnet here and stick it down. And then we're going to do the exact same thing again. We're going to grab the negative that matches, peel the backing off of the negative, and then we'll close the flap so that the match is now down here in the appropriate place. And then I'll just stick some score tape like we've been doing on the two magnets that we just set down. And that's it for our magnets. Um, so now we can go ahead and get to decorating for, oh, by the way, on page eight, I mentioned in uh, the end of video two that I felt page eight was a little lonely with just this large flap. So I added this little flap here I have added that to the cut list for part two. I didn't add this on live on camera, so I'll just tell you now, but it's also in the cut list. This measures four and three quarters by four and a quarter. You score on the four and three quarter inch side at half an inch. So this will hold a four by four photo on either side. I just felt this page was a little lonely and I had a little extra paper, so I decided to add that extra little flap there. Finally, this back page, we're going to have that waterfall. Remember, we, we cut in video part two of this tutorial series. We cut the four little mechanisms for our waterfall, but we won't be adding those till we get our design paper down. I decided to do a ribbon closure for the waterfall as well to save on some magnets. So I put a piece of score tape here where one part of the ribbon is going to go to remind me. And I'll show you how we put all that together once we get there. All right, so let's go ahead and get started. Let's do our inside front cover. First, actually, my notes start with page one, so we'll start with page one and we'll come back to the inside front cover. For page one, we have to decorate, of course, this top flap. 
Um, so let's start there. You'll need two of these, one for the inside and one for, one for the outside and one for the inside. All right. So for page one here, I decided to use this gorgeous paper. Now I've already pre-cut and pre-inked around all of my papers. And what I use for my inking, this is so easy to do. This is a powder puff chalking ink and the color is Java. This is, you can get this at Scrap and Create and it's so easy to do. You just hold it up against your paper and then just go around your paper like so. It's so easy to do. It's very quick and painless. It makes inking very enjoyable because it's so quick. So I definitely recommend this. It's a powder puff chalking ink and it comes in different colors. I use Java for this paper collection. But again, you can get this at scrapandcreate.com. All right, so what I did is I went ahead and pre-cut this gorgeous fairy. You guys know if you've seen any of my tutorials, I like to have spaces where I'm not gonna put any pictures um, and just enjoy the beautiful paper. So this is one of those spaces. This measures six and three quarters by six and three quarters. Now remember on this flap, I used my little envelope punch board, which let me grab that really quick for you guys just to demonstrate. The flap itself is uh, seven inches tall because it's the same height as our page. So when we made the notch in the envelope punch board, we just divided seven by two to get whatever the half mark is, and that was three and a half. So that's how we made that little notch, and I showed you that in video number two. To do the design paper, all I did is I just put it in, and I just did it an eighth of an inch smaller. So instead of uh, three and a half, I went to three and three eighths and then punched it down. And that worked for me. Math wise, I don't think that's exactly half of six and three quarters, if you know what I mean, but it works and it looks really nice. And so that's how I ended up doing it. I also added this little brad here and I just used my eighth of an inch um, punch. I got this from my local craft store, but you could also use your um, crocodile if you have that. Um, and I just punched there to add this brad, and then I added a couple little, um, uh, what do you call them, the little jump rings from Tim Holtz, and then I added this beautiful little fairy charm. And as you can see there on the back is the back of the brads, the little legs of the brads. So what I'm gonna do before I start adding uh, my art glitter glue to the back of this is I'm gonna put some score tape over those brad legs so that that's not gonna go anywhere. And then I'm going to go ahead now, and here's where we're going to use our art glitter glue. Remember, I've said numerous times I like to use art glitter glue to adhere all of my design papers to my book. I just love this glue. It's firm. It sticks. It holds everything down perfectly. And it gives a little added stiffness, but not in a bad way, if that makes sense, to, to your book. It just kind of makes my book feel a little bit more sturdy and a little bit better able to uh, you know, live up to wear and tear and that sort of thing. Also with glue, as you can see, I didn't get it down perfectly where I wanted it that first go around. And you have a little bit more forgiveness with glue than you do with regular adhesive. I can pick it up and try again if I'm not happy. Sometimes I have to go ahead and just add a little bit more glue, um, you know, if, if I've picked it up, um, but I do like that little extra bit of wiggle room that I get because I'm not great at always setting things down in the right place the first time around. So I like that little forgiveness that the glue gives. All right, I'm gonna grab my little um, bone folder and get this nice and burnished down. Isn't she pretty there? Oh, beautiful. Just gonna add a little bit of glue. Sometimes when I pick it up like that, some of the glue will come off of the corners. So I'll just go back and that's what makes having this little silver tip on your um, art glitter glue uh, really, really helpful. You can get into these tiny little areas very easily. And so I definitely recommend get your art glitter glue. Go to scrapandcrate.com to get your art glitter glue and make sure you get this additional silver tip that comes with the, the pin in the top. This is, um. It won't rust. It's a rust resistant pin, so it keeps the top um, unclogged 
and also won't rust so it's very nice so this is my page one right flap now you could always take small little pieces small little uh, photo like a three by three would fit here possibly um, so you could still add photos to this and not cover up the fairy if you wanted to uh, for me and the number of pictures I have for this book I'm gonna be able to leave this totally blank in other words just enjoy the paper but that's completely up to you okay enough chit chat sorry I feel like I'm talking your ear off today so next we want to do the back of this right flap so for that I chose this beautiful paper here I did the same little notch that I explained a moment ago and then I actually took my um, exacto knife and I cut into the paper and then mounted it onto white cardstock that's now just going to go right on top of this and what that does let me grab a little um photo mat I made what that does is it enables you to actually slide photo mats or whatever you want behind here into the paper does that make sense so uh, that's just a little fun design choice that I made. I also cut the butterfly open so you could put this little bookmark in if you wanted to. Isn't that cute? So I just thought that was a really cute idea. You could put like a little tag here and uh, a little the little bookmark there and you know you're good to go you can obviously choose not to do that if you like that is totally optional that's just I just thought this paper was screaming to be cut open a little bit so that's what I did there all right so let's go ahead and add our glue to the back of this page and then we'll take this little backing off down here for our magnet and then we can stick this down. If my head gets in, I apologize. It just it helps to get way over your head, right over your workspace, so you can make sure that you have everything lined up and you have that nice border around your paper. All right, let's go ahead and burnish this with our bone folder. And again, you can be using regular adhesive for this as well if you prefer. Um, I just really like the art glitter glue, and so that's my personal choice, but you use whatever adhesive you are comfortable with. Okay, so here's our flap so far. We have our beautiful little fairy here, and then this beautiful paper on the inside. Now it's time to do this flap here. So let's go ahead and remove the, the tape backing to the magnet. This is the paper that I chose for um, this flap right here, you're gonna need two of the same size, one for the front, one for the back. It's three and three quarters by six and three quarters. By the way, all of these measurements for the design paper will be in the description box of this video below. You can change up a little bit if you like, depending on the size of border that you like to leave behind. I cut all of my papers a quarter of an inch smaller than the actual flap or page itself because I like an eighth of an inch border all the way around. If you like a smaller or larger border, then you would just adjust the measurements accordingly. But that's what I um, that's what I did. Again, nice area here to just enjoy this beautiful paper was my thinking. And then on the back, we have this paper here. Again, it's the same size. It's just this beautiful script paper, and you can add some lovely photos to the back of this. And as you'll see in the walkthrough, I'll give you photo sample ideas and things like that and how to add your photos to this book. All right, so let's go ahead and get that down. You don't always have to burnish with glue. I just like to do it sometimes just to get that glue spread out nice and even. Now we have this flap here. I decided to use a cut apart from the collection for this flap here. It measures five and three quarters by three and five eighths. And I just, so I just went with the size of the cut apart for this particular flap. Um, it'll, the flap is a little bit larger, so it's a little bit more than a quarter, than an eighth of an inch border on this one because I wanted to be able to fit a four by six photo on the back. All right, I will put some cardstock on the back here and you'll see that during the final walkthrough on the back of a lot of my smaller flaps i'm just going to be putting coordinating cardstock just to save on paper because photos are going to go there so we really don't need to worry too much about um you know having beautiful paper there because it's definitely going to get covered up now it's time to do the base page itself i chose this beautiful paper for that remember we don't need to go all the way down 
because we have this pocket here. So I just cut this at six and three quarters by six. We're gonna go ahead and grab our glue and get this nice and glued on the back. And then remember we didn't adhere the sides completely of our pocket. So that lets us slip this right down into our pocket area here. So once we have this down and nicely adhered to our page, then we can go ahead and take the backing of the score tape that we left off the sides of the short ends of the pocket. So go ahead and do that now. And then you can just stick that pocket right down on top of your design paper. Go ahead and do the left side. And boom, now our pocket is nice and stuck down. It's a generous pocket. It lets us fit lots of stuff in it. And it fits very nicely. And now you'll see when we add the pocket design paper, how it's gonna line up beautifully with this design paper and just give a very nice visually appealing look to it. Just looks a bit more finished. All right, there we go. Okay, so this pocket piece right here of design paper measures six and three quarters by two and three quarters. And I just chose this beautiful um, print here for the pocket. And you just line that up right on your pocket there. Make sure to line it up with the design paper as well that you've placed on the pocket page. So it just, it's just beautiful, isn't it? So again, we'll have some coordinating paper here on the back of this, and you'll see that during the walkthrough, but this is what it looks like now. Isn't that beautiful? This paper, oh my gosh, I just can't get enough of this paper. So that is page one, all done. Let's move on now to page two. Remember, I left the score tape here so I could do a ribbon closure. So the first thing I wanna do is add my ribbon. I always cut more than I need, always because then I, I can't I can't add ribbon, but I can cut it off if that makes sense. So yeah, that does sometimes make for a little bit of waste, but I'd rather be a little bit too cautious and have more than I need than not enough. So I've cut two pieces of this beautiful, it's kind of like an off-white ribbon. Looks like there's a little piece of tape here I didn't catch, so I'm trying to get that off right now. Of course, I have glue all over my fingers, so that's not helping. Let me see if I can get this tape off really quick. There we go. Okay, so I've cut two pieces of this beautiful ribbon. This came from Scrap and Create. This, Julie and Daphne are my friends. They are the owners of Scrap and Create and they are amazing. And when you order from them, they will send you some little goodies in your package. Sometimes ribbons, sometimes charms, sometimes both. And when you see the final walkthrough of this book, you'll see some of the beautiful charms that they sent with this collection. Um, and then when, uh, during this tutorial, you'll see some of the ribbon as well. And it's just so generous of them. And I just love using them. They just add so much to the book. Okay, so as you can see, I've removed the backing to the score tape that I had here. And so what's gonna happen is the ribbon is going to be stuck down to the score tape like so. And then once this is closed, you'll just tie a bow. And of course we'll have to cut this ribbon, but we're gonna do that once we have all the design paper on. So just kind of get it out of your way for right now. And then let's go ahead and um, adhere our design paper to this page. Okay, so for page two, um, we're gonna start with this little pocket on this left flap. This little pocket, is. this is the piece of paper that I chose of design paper for the pocket, and it measures five by two and three quarters. So I'm just gonna, remember I um, have already pre-inked everything. I definitely recommend, if you have the time, just giving some inking to your papers. It really, I know it doesn't really show up on camera, but in person, um, in you know, in looking at it in person, it really does add to the beauty of the book. It's a very subtle addition, but well worth it in my opinion because it is noticeable and it does give it that really pretty distressed look. Now this is what I chose to go behind the pocket, this paper here. It measures five by four and three quarters because we don't have to go all the way down because we've got this pocket here. So I'm just gonna add some glue to the back like so, and then we'll just stick this right over top of that ribbon, okay? Sticking it right over top of that ribbon, everything is gonna be glued down together. Okay. Now what we're gonna do is we can go ahead and remove the tape backing on the short sides of the pocket like we just did with pocket number one on the first page, we're doing the same thing. Just go ahead and get that tape backing off. 
and look how beautiful that is. Oh, I love that paper combination there. I just think that's gorgeous. Okay, so now let's move to the inside of that left flap. This piece, since we do have to go all the way down, we don't have a pocket here, so it measures five by six and three quarters, and it's gonna go right here. So let's go ahead and get this all glued up. Okay, and then we'll stick this down. Make sure when you're sticking your design paper down that you're clear of the uh, square lines. Should be easy to be clear because we've cut the paper, you know, smaller than the actual flap itself, so it should fit perfectly. It's just something to keep in mind. Okay, now we have um, this flap here, okay? And for this flap, I chose this paper for the front. Isn't that beautiful? Um, and this paper measures um, five, but same as this one, five by six and three quarters. This is a little pattern heavy, but you'll see during the walkthrough when I kind of put some, some photo mats on how um, by adding your pictures, it will kind of break that patterning up a little bit. And uh, it is just going to be really beautiful. I hope so anyway. In my head, it's beautiful. <laughs> In my head, it's gorgeous. I just, I didn't have that down straight, so I'm just redoing it. Again, another reason why I love the glue, I have the ability to just, just pick it right back up. I can slide it around until I'm perfectly content with it. I just really like working with the glue. Pardon my head if it's in the way. I'm so sorry about that. I'm just trying to get this down nice and straight. And again, we stuck this one right over that ribbon as well. Now, because I picked it up, I've lost a little bit of my glue, so I'm just gonna take my tip here and just go right underneath that corner, get up here as well. And then we'll do the same thing on this side. That's the only downside to when you kind of pick it up to reposition it. You might have to add more glue, especially to the edges, to the sides. For some reason, it just tends to pick up the most there on, the, on those spaces. Now we need to do the back of this. Make sure, by the way, that it's nice and stuck down on top of that ribbon. So I'm just gonna add just a little bit more glue. If the glue squishes out a little bit out of the corners of the paper, it's not a big deal because this art glitter glue dries clear. So not a big deal at all. So let's go ahead and open this flap now. And again, we have a back piece that is the same size. So all three of these are the same size, which is five by six and three quarters. So I'm gonna go ahead and get the glue on the back of this. And then we will add this to the back of this flap here. Again, please excuse my head if it's in the frame of the camera. Okay. All right, that is actually a little bit crooked. I am having placement problems today, as you can see. I'm usually better at placing things down, um, but not today. All right. Next, we're gonna do this large flap here, and this is some of the six by six cut aparts that I used from the collection for this flap. They measure six by six, and you'll have two of them, one for the front, one for the back. So we'll get that nice and glued. I'm gonna put this on the front here. Just beautiful, isn't it? And then oh, go ahead and open up your flap. I'm gonna take the, t the backing of the score tape off uh, where that will replace that magnet. And this is the paper that I've chosen for the back. So I'm gonna go ahead and glue that. And then we will stick that down on this flap here, like so. And now we just have the base page itself. So let's go ahead and take this off, the backing of the score tape for the magnet. And this measures six and three quarters by six and three quarters. And I just chose a very mild pattern for this, because again, this, this spread is a little bit pattern heavy, but it's gonna be broken up by our photos. So it's all gonna look beautiful in the end. But uh, I just went very mild with this base page pattern here. I love the gold flex in this paper. I just think it's beautiful. Okay, let me just get a little under there. Okay, all right. So this is now page two. 
we have this flap here that's magnetized and then we have this flap and then this flap and this beautiful bow so I'm gonna go ahead and tie my ribbon now so I can get an idea of how long much I can cut off just so it's not cumbersome and bothering us as we go through the rest of the book all right I'm just gonna pull these down a little bit and then make my bow tight and then I just like to pull the ears of the bow until I have the bow the approximate size that I want and then I can go ahead and trim it and then I'll use what's left over for some tags later and you'll see all those in the finished book during the walkthrough actually that's a little too too big still okay so that's page two now let's move on to page three page three we have whoops turn my too many pages in my little notebook. <laughs> All right, we have this small flap here that we're gonna start with for page three. So I'm gonna go ahead and grab my materials. This is from the cut aparts in the collection and it's three and three quarters by three and three quarters. So it's just gonna fit right here on the top of this little flap. Make sure I'm doing good on camera, staying on camera, okay. So we'll just go ahead and place this centered on this flap here and then press down. All right, we'll put some, and I'll do this off camera and you'll see it in the walkthrough. I'll just put some coordinating cardstock on the back. And again, that's just to save the design paper since I only used two packs. Next, we have this um, inside this flap here that we need to do. So this piece measures um, four by six and a half. Okay, so let's go ahead and remove the backing on this magnet and then we'll get this nice and glued up and stick it on. Remember, you don't have to go the whole entire length because we have this pocket here. So um, also remember this is one of those pockets that's not a foldy pocket. This was one of our tight pockets that we did. So we just have um, we have a bead of glue at the bottom, if you'll recall from video number two, and then we have the quarter of an inch score tape on the side. So go ahead and now you can remove that quarter of an inch score tape backing so that pocket can stick down nice and firm to this um, flap. Now you'll still be able to fit plenty in this pocket. It's just not as expendable as expandable as the ones where we do the folding but I wanted it to be a little bit smaller because I wanted to just have some tags in this particular pocket was my design idea. You could certainly um, amend your design if you want and do a regular pocket there if you want to add you know, more to it than I will be adding. That's totally your choice. This little design paper here for the pocket front measures four by two and a quarter. We're just gonna stick that down and see how that has just a lovely look here between the back in the pocket that's why i leave that tape on the sides until i'm ready to put the design paper down i just think it really adds so that's what that's going to look like with that flap closed and again my idea is i'm going to have you know a, a tag or two in this pocket with some journaling um when i'm all when everything's all said and done and i'll punch little holes in ribbon it's just going to look really pretty when it's all done and that's also what i meant by you really don't need a magnet here if you don't want because the inserts can act as your closure for this flap i'm just a little magnet crazy as i've said so um i tend to put them everywhere and i always have tons of packs of magnets around my craft area because i just really like the the feeling of everything being neat and tidy, but you do not have to put as many magnets as I do. It is not necessary for the construction of your book. Okay, so next I have this sheet here for the back of the flap. There's no pocket, so we do need to go all the way down this time. And this, this design paper piece measures four by six and three quarters, so I'm gonna get it nice and gluey on the back. And then we'll take off this backing here of this score tape. And then just go ahead and add this to your flap. Very pretty. Love this paper. This paper is one of my favorites. And I uh, also have it for the spot for the back cover of my book as well. I really loved that beautiful paper. Next, we have this base page flap number one, which is this long flap. The design paper, this is one of the cut-aparts that I chose to use for this particular page 
beautiful unicorn. The saying here says imagination is everything. It is the preview of life's coming attractions. I love that. So this um, design paper measures three and three eighths by five and five eighths. And that's, again, that measurement just comes from cutting out the cut apart itself. That's what the cut apart measured. So that is what the size is, if that makes, if that makes sense. I, there is a little bit more than an eighth of an inch um, um, gap or border, I should say, around this one because I wanted a four by six to fit on the back. So that's why it looks a little, there's a little bit more white showing behind this one, but that is intentional. Um, again, so we can utilize a full four by six on the back. All right, beautiful. Beautiful. Grab my bone folder here, give that some burnishing. So I'm going to go ahead and lift that up. And again, we'll put some coordinating cardstock on the back. Now we have this little flap here, and it's another one of the cut aparts, and it just measures three and uh, it's a little, it's a little odd sized. It's um, three and three quarters by th no, it's not. I'm sorry, I was looking at the wrong line. It's normal. It's three and three quarters by three and three quarters. Sorry about that. So. Um, I was just looking at the wrong line in my notebook of measurements. <laughs> okay, so let's go ahead and stick this down. Beautiful. Okay, so that's all nice and stuck down. And then again, we'll put coordinating cardstock there. Um, now we want to do our base page. And this measures six and three quarters by five. Remember, we don't have to go all the way down because we'll have the pocket there. So I'm going to go ahead and remove the backing of the score tape to the magnet, and then we'll glue the back of this paper, and we will go ahead and put this down. I think I called out this measurement, but it's six and three quarters, and I just chose five. You know, just kind of take your ruler and measure down so you're far enough down in the pocket and then go ahead and, you know, cut it to that size. You could even do less than five if you want. That's just what I chose to do. But just as long as it's down a little bit past the pocket, you're fine. All right. Now we can go ahead and take the score tape backing off of the sides of the pockets. Like so. Make sure you don't accidentally get your ribbon stuck. All right, now we can go ahead and adhere the design paper for our pocket. This is the little piece that I chose. It actually goes this way. No, it doesn't. Wait a minute. It goes this way. <laughs> and it measures six and three quarters by two and three quarters. So we'll go ahead and glue that down here. Again, just center it on your pocket and it's going to look beautiful. It's also going to be centered with the design paper above it. It just looks beautiful. All right, so this is what this page whoops, is going to look like. So we have this flap, this flap, they're magnetized, and then this little flap here is also magnetized. Isn't that beautiful? Love that page. I think that's one of my favorites. All right, now we're on to page number four. The first thing that we're going to do is we need to grab the little white square that I had you cut out and set aside in video number two. My tags are flying all over the place. Let me just push them back here. Remember we wrote page four closure on this little square here. You want to cut two pieces of design paper that are, <clears throat> pardon me, three and three quarters by three and three quarters. So what we're going to do is we are going to go ahead and put, put it on the front, but don't put it on the back yet. Don't put your design paper on the back yet, only on the front, okay? So I'm going to go ahead and glue this little panel here onto the front of this square. I'm going to move my book out of the way for just a minute so you can really see what I'm doing. So I'm just centering this on top of this little square here. Okay, now you're going to need four magnets. Okay, flip this over. Make sure you don't flip it over like this. You want to flip it up and put your magnets on the right side of the back. 
if you flip it the other way, then your magnets are going to be on the wrong side. Let me, let me try to explain that a little bit better. But this closure is going to go like this on top of this double door page layout. So you want your magnets, you want two magnets, one here and one here. Does that make sense? So they're going to be, when this panel is facing up, they're going to be on the right here, like where the butterfly is ish over here. So to make sure that I'm putting them on the right side, the correct side, I'm just going to flip this up and then I'm going to put two magnets right here. So go ahead, we'll need four total. So go ahead and get out four magnets total. You need two positives and two negatives. Okay. All right, you can set your little packaging aside. So go ahead and put two positives on the back here of this panel. And I'm really sorry, my fingers have glue all over them. I uh, try to <laughs> not do that on videos, but sometimes it happens when I'm trying to, to work, so. I'm still learning, by the way, how to do these videos this way. Usually, in the past, I would make the book twice, which is quite a bit of work. It's a lot easier work-wise to do it this way, but then you see all my messiness as well, so I apologize for that. <laughs> okay, so just like we did for the other magnets, I'm going to go ahead and grab the 3 8 of, of an inch score tape and put it on the back just to make sure those magnets are nicely in place. All right, go ahead and set your negative magnets aside for just a moment because now we want to put our design paper on the back. And I just realized I forgot to cut that piece. So let me go through my scraps really quick. See what I have left and we're just going to cut a little three and three quarter by three and three quarter piece. I don't have a whole lot of scraps left to be honest with you, but I know I have at least one that'll work. This will work. Okay, so we'll do three and three quarters by three and three quarters. We'll want to ink this really quick. So let me just grab my little powder puff. Love this thing. Most half of this back is going to be covered um, by the, the page. So it's really not a huge deal. Um, but you just want something, you know, kind of nice on the back. So it's not just plain white with your magnet showing if that makes sense. All right, so now I'm going to go ahead and peel off the backing of these magnets. And then I'm going to glue this down onto right on top of them. Okay. Doesn't really matter the orientation of this. This side's what's going to be showing. So we'll just. That's pretty flower, and that'll be showing from the back. So that's what we'll do. Okay. Oops. Okay. All right. So that's all done. So now what we want to do is go ahead and bring your, I totally messed that up. I was trying to get the corner down and I ended up pulling it up somehow. Okay, <laughs> all right. So now what we wanna do is bring your book back over and we're just gonna put design paper on the left door for right now, okay? Both of these design papers will be the same size and you'll need four of them. One, two, three, four, right? So front and back, they're the same sizes, okay? And that size is three and a quarter by six and three quarters. And this is the one that I chose for the left. So go ahead and glue that down. Okay. I think that paper is so pretty. It's so unique, the design of this paper, I feel. I just feel like it's just so different from anything else on the market. And I just, I love it. I love it, love it. It's so unique. It's very, um, just very elegant. Oh, I'm not doing a good job today setting paper down. Let me try this again. Gosh, I tell you, once you go on camera, <laughs> I don't know what it is about the camera, but it's like a curse or something. <laughs> okay. There we go. So this guy, remember we have these little eighth inch gussets, so we just wanna make sure they're in the right spot as we do this. Okay, so now what we're gonna do is we're gonna take, now that we have this design paper down, 
and make sure that your gussets are in the right spot so that your pages meet perfectly in the middle. Now what we're going to do is we are going to glue. We know our magnets are here, so we're just going to put glue on the left of the back of this panel and glue it to here. Before we do that, however, we are going to grab our negative magnets and then I'm going to add my glue. Okay, I know I want it about like that. Yeah, like that. So I'm just going to kind of put my finger where I want the glue to stop, which is about there. Can you guys see what I did there? Just eyeballing it. Nothing fancy at all there. No fancy measuring. I suppose that you could measure if you really wanted to, but I'm just eyeballing it so that it's somewhat in the center of this double door layout here. I'm now going to go ahead and peel the backing off of the negative magnets. And now we're going to go ahead and stick this down. Just like that. Make sure it's nice and straight. Yep, my doors are meeting perfectly in the middle. Okay, now lift this up and your magnets will transfer to this side, okay? But I did not end up holding it down long enough with, for my glue to set. So what I'm gonna do is I'm gonna go ahead and place it down again, get it right on top of the magnets, and then we're just gonna let this sit for a minute. You might wanna put something heavy on top of it for a second, like, um you know, maybe some score tape, or if you have an acrylic block, maybe grab an acrylic block and just let that sit on top of that side for just a moment so that glue really sticks. Alrighty, and then what we're gonna do is we are gonna go ahead and um, once that's nice and stuck down, we can finish decorating this page. All right, so let's go ahead and lift this up now. Yep, it's nice, it's down nice and firm. Let's grab our 3 8 of an inch tape and just cover these magnets just to make them extra secure. And now we're going to put the front of our right flap or the right side of our front of our door, if you will, for this page design on. And again, it's the same measurement, all four of these pieces. And I'll just say it again, it's um, three and a quarter by six and three quarters. So I'm just getting a lot of glue on the back there. And we're just gonna go ahead and center this right on top of this flap. So we've covered up those magnets and now when this closes, I don't know if you heard the click or not, but it clicks because it's magnetized. Hear that? Yeah. So a little unhappy with up here. I put it, this part a little bit too far to the left, I think, but I don't think it's going to be fixable. So we're just going to deal with it. It's homemade, right? It's okay. It's okay. All right, so let's go ahead and lift that up, lift this up, and then we can do these two sides, which again are the same exact size. Okay, so this can go on the inside of the left flap. There we go, and we'll do the inside of the right flap. All right, now we have a little flap on our base page right here. This is from the Cut Aparts. It's just a beautiful dragonfly. I love this. This measures, by the way, five and three quarters by three and three quarters. Again, that's just the size of the Cut Apart. So that's the size it is. <laughs> that makes sense. We'll put some coordinating cardstock here. Let's go ahead and do our base page now. Uh, again, you don't have to go all the way down because you've got the pocket there. This is the pa paper I chose for the base page. And so I just measured mine to six and three quarters by five and a half. You can do anything that'll get you a little bit below the pocket is fine. Alrighty, so let's just center this here on our base page and then go ahead and press it down. We can now go ahead and remove the score tape backing to the short sides of our pocket. Like so. And then we can go ahead and add our pretty panel from our um, for our pocket, which measures six and three quarters by two and three quarters. And we'll stick that down 
right there. Beautiful. Okay. Okay, so this is page number four. Pretty. And we'll have some little accents and stuff that we'll add that you'll see in the final walkthrough. But that is what page four looks like. All right, let's move on to page number five. We have another one of these uh, large right flaps with the little notch in them. So I did um, another little design um, choice for this page. I added this little beautiful charm. It's kind of big to be a charm, but I added, there's two holes on either side. It's a beautiful unicorn. And um, so I just added two little brads and they're on the back there. You can see the little legs of the brads. So I'm gonna do like I did with page one and I'm gonna go ahead and add some score tape to the back of the brad legs, just so they stay nice and firmly in place. We do not want those brads moving on us because then our charm's gonna fall off and it just won't be good. So I just feel a little bit more reassured by that extra reinforcement of the score tape. Okay, go ahead and peel that backing off and now we can add some glue to the back of this and then place it down on our flap. Again, this was an idea because this is such beautiful paper. This was one of my spots where I just thought it would be pretty to just enjoy the beautiful paper to maybe not add any photos. You could certainly add a small one in the top left corner without, um, you know, covering up the unicorn image if you wanted to. But, you know, you have plenty of room in this album, so why, you know, why cover up the beautiful, the beautiful artistry of the paper? We always spend so much and we hoard our paper because we don't want to cut into it, and I decided I'm gonna stop doing that and I am going to really just enjoy the paper and I'm gonna design my album so that I get the best of both worlds. I have places for my photographs and I have places just to enjoy the beautiful, beautiful paper that I have spent so much money on and so much time hoarding, right? Okay, there we go. See, I had to pick it up again because for some reason I am challenged today in putting anything on straight, which is a bit embarrassing when you're on camera, so I apologize for that, guys. Please forgive me. All right, I'm gonna go ahead and open this up now, and we're gonna do this inside of this flap. So this is just very plain paper that's gonna go right there. Go ahead and remove your backing to your score tape for your magnet, and this measures the same as the front flap, so it's, um, I don't think I told you that measurement because I haven't turned my book. <laughs> I haven't turned my notebook. I'll, I'll tell you in just a minute. Let me get this. I believe it's just six and three quarters by six and three quarters. And then you add your little notch like, like I showed you um, when we did page number one. But I'll double check that and I can turn the page here in just a second. Okay. Yeah. Six and three quarters by six and three quarters. So both of these measure six and three quarters by six and three quarters. Okay. So now we have, you're going to need two of each of what I'm about to call out. We have the flap itself front and back which is going to be two and three quarters by four i'm sorry four by five is the flap and then two pockets which are this which are the same size which is two and three quarters by four so let's do the flap itself first this is the paper that i chose for this flap again this measures we don't have to go all the way down because we have the pocket so this measures four by five go ahead and put some glue on the back get it nice and glued up here and then we'll go ahead and stick this down. Forgive my head if it is in the camera. I just want to make sure I have nice even borders on each side. All right, now I can go ahead and remove the backing to our score tape for our magnet. And I'm gonna go ahead and place um, the pocket on this side, which is four by, I'm sorry, two and three quarters by four. All right, so I'm gonna go ahead and stick that down. Just even with the paper above. We can go ahead now, remember these are our shallow pockets again, so we just have that quarter inch tape on the side, so we can go ahead and remove that. All right, so there is flap number one. All righty, so let's go ahead and flip this open. I'm gonna do the same thing again with the same sizes. I seem to be missing my pocket for this one. So I may have to cut it. I don't, somehow it came unpaper clipped from my little set that I had set aside for page 
five. So we may have to cut a, cut a new piece if I can't find it. It probably just fell on the floor here. Um, I'll look for it in just a moment. So this is, uh, again, the same size, four by five. We're just gonna stick this back behind this pocket. Just make sure you have some nice borders of white cardstock on all sides. Go ahead and push that down. I'm gonna go ahead and remove now the quarter inch score tape. Here it is, I found it. Okay, good, 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 good. I found the pocket piece that just slipped out of the paper clip. <laughs> okay, and then we can remove the backing to this magnet here. And then we'll add our pocket piece here, which again is the same as the front and it's two and three quarters by four. So that's just gonna go right there, beautiful. All right, now we have this large flap. This comes from the six by six cut aparts from the collection and it measures um, six by six. And you'll have two of these, one for the front and one for the back. Now, if you wanted to conserve paper, you could just put cardstock on the back if you wanted to. I decorated the backs um, because this was just a very large flap. So I kind of just wanted to have some design paper behind it but you absolutely could just use cardstock if you prefer. Okay, now I'm gonna remove that magnet score tape backing there, and I'm going to add the other six by six panel to the back of the flap here, like so. Again, just lining that up in the center there with white border all around. Okay, and now we just have the base page to do. And it measures six and three quarters by six and three quarters. And this is the paper that I chose for that. Very simple design, since some of the other patterns on this page are a little heavier pattern. So this is a very simple pattern here. All right, so that's gonna go right there. Okay, go ahead and press that down. Make sure that glue is evenly covering entire back of the paper. Sometimes you might just want to go in and add a little bit more glue to the corners and that's what's great about this silver glue tip here is I'm able to do that very easily and I actually want to get right here as well. Okay and up here. Okay. <laughs> All right so this is what page five looks like. Isn't that beautiful? I just love it. So it opens up Lots of room for tags and journaling and photos in this spread. So that's what I mean. Why cover this beautiful unicorn, right? Because we've made so much, we've made sure that the album has plenty of room elsewhere so we can have these beautiful pages that are just uh, for, for enjoying the beautiful paper. All right, let's move on to page six. For page six, we have this first right flap here. And so that is going to that is going to measure four by five and three quarters. And again, it's just one of the cut aparts from the collection. I just chose the beautiful fairy. So let's go ahead and glue her down. Okay, so she goes right here. Again, I put it down crooked, my apologies. Gosh, I don't know what is wrong with today. I just can't seem to get anything glued down straight. So let's try again. Gosh, that's how you go on camera and then you look silly. <laughs> Forgive me guys, so sorry about that. Okay, but luckily, hopefully I am teaching you that you can fix your mistakes and that art glitter glue is very forgiving until it's really stuck down. Once it's stuck down though, it's not going anywhere, which I love. Okay, so this just on the back of that flap, I'm just gonna put a little bit of coordinating cardstock. We now have this little flap here, and this is just a cut apart from the collection, which measures three, measures three and three quarters by three and three quarters. So let's go ahead and glue that and stick that down like so. Again, I'll just put coordinating cardstock on the back of that flap. Now we have the pocket page itself, which is six and three quarters by five. Again, remember you don't have to go all the way down because we have the pocket on the bottom. So that saves you some paper. 
going to go ahead and glue this here and then pull this pocket out and stick this down. Again, just making sure we have nice borders of white cardstock around the design paper. Really stick that down, maybe give it a burnish with your bone folder. And now we just have the little pocket and this measures six and three quarters by two and three quarters. Go ahead and glue that down. Alrighty. And again, I just want to I just want to emphasize these panels on the right and left, the back of these flaps are not going to be left plain. The magnet's not going to be left exposed. We're going to put pretty coordinating cardstock there, which you will see in the final review. I just I didn't want to bore you with um you know, adding just regular cardstock to the back of my flaps. I thought that might be kind of boring. So, of course, it'll be the same size as the measurements I gave you for the front of the flaps. So you can, you know, if you want, if you have extra paper, if you buy three packs of the paper, then all of your backings could have design paper on it if you wanted them to. That's completely up to you. For my purposes, I only bought two packs. So um, I used what I had to work with and I pretty much used up. I have some scraps left for some tags, which you'll see in the final walkthrough. But other than that, I have used all of this paper. And let me tell you, it was so fun to work with. It's just gorgeous. Okay, so now we're on to page seven. We're almost done, guys. For page seven, we have this little flap here. Again, that's a cut apart from the collection. It measures three and three quarters by three and three quarters. So I'm gonna give it some glue and then we'll just stick it right on the front here. Again, we'll put, I will be putting off camera some uh, coordinating cardstock on the back. Now we have the base page itself which is gonna be six and three quarters by five. Pretty standard measurement throughout the book when you on the pages that I have pockets. Because I was running so low on paper though, I had to cut a little strip to make this one fit. So um, this actually measures, if you just wanna know how I did it, this actually measures six inches and then this little strip here is the three quarters. So, um, you know, if you if you run into a problem where you are getting low on paper, you can always just use some paper piecing and uh, and still get the job done. And the paper is all going to coordinate with itself, obviously. Um, Stamp period does a great job as just, you know, Graphic 45 and other uh, companies as well do fantastic jobs with all of their papers really coordinating well with each other. So that um, you are you can use this method and it's going to work for you. I only had to do it this one time, but um, you know it works. So I'm just gonna butt it right up against the paper there. I might leave a tiny space design-wise. That's your choice if you wanna leave a little space or not. Um, there we go, okay. So see, I think that looks really nice and um, finished, even though we had to kind of piece it together. I'm gonna go ahead and take the little um, backing now of the pocket off. The, what am I trying to say? You guys know what I'm trying to say. The, the, the score tape backing of the pocket. Short sides that we leave on. I accidentally pulled up my base page paper just a little bit, so let me fix that really quick. Sometimes I'm a little too rough when I'm trying to go quick on camera and I end up Tearing my paper a little bit. No one's gonna know because the pocket's gonna cover it, but I know, so I just wanted to fix it. Okay, all fixed. And finally, we have this little pocket piece here that actually goes this way, and it measures um, six and three quarters by two and three quarters. So let's get some glue on the back of this and go ahead and glue this down. Okay, so this is page seven. This was a very simple page. No big deal, easy peasy to work with, but I really liked the little dragonfly peeking out of this flap here. I just thought that was a really cute design choice there. Finally, we're on to page number eight. We are almost done. I really hope you guys are liking this design. I know we all have different tastes when it comes to paper. I am in love with this paper, but hopefully, even if this isn't a particular paper pack that appeals to you, you might hopefully like the design of the album and can use it for um, you know, your own purposes later. Okay, so uh, for page eight, we have this large flap here that measures six by six, the design paper does. So let's go ahead and stick that down. Okay. 
Okay. Now we have the back of this flap to do that also has a pocket. Okay, so let's go ahead and tear the magnet backing off, the score tape backing off of the magnet. And then we have this beautiful paper here, which I actually should trim a little bit. You can do, let's see, six by about five and a half would work. I just forgot to trim mine down because of the pocket. I just neglected to account for the pocket. So yeah, that looks good. That's gonna fit right in there. Let's go ahead and glue this. All right, and then just pull the pocket out. And uh, I'm trying to do this up so you can see this on camera, but it's really kind of difficult. Okay, there we go. Oh, that paper's gorgeous, isn't it? Okay, and then I just have this little strip here for the pocket. Let's go ahead and remove first the little score tape backing. This is another one of those tight pockets, so we have the quarter inch score tape on either side. So go ahead and remove that, and then stick your pocket down. Okay, and then we'll just stick this little flap here, which measures one and a, one and a half rather by six inches. Just a little tiny strip there. Okay, all right. Now remember, I added this flap off camera, so this was not included in video number two on the page construction, but this measures four and three quarters by four and three quarters. So your design paper is four and a quarter by four and a quarter. I'm sorry. Four and three quarters by four and a quarter. Score on the four and three quarter inch side at half an inch. So now when it's when it's um, functional in the book, it's four and a quarter by four and a quarter. I think, oh gosh, let me just double check. Yeah, it's four and a quarter by four and a quarter, which means our design paper is four by um, four. <laughs> gosh. <laughs> I am struggling today, guys. I'm so sorry. All right. So we're gonna, just going to go ahead and glue this. I just had some scraps left, and I just felt that this page was a little lonely. So that's why I added this little flap here. Okay, so we've got that there. Open it up. Tear this backing off. And then we'll put the back on, which again is 4x4. Four four. Okay, I'll just set that there like so. And now we have our base page, which is six and three quarters by six and three quarters, and it looks like this. So we can tear off our score tape backing, and then we'll go ahead and glue this down. All right. Again, just make sure you don't go over your score lines and that you just have a nice white border around all sides, and you'll be golden if you do that. Okay, so this is page number eight, very simple page. And we'll have some accents to it, which you'll see in the final walkthrough, but very, very simple. Really, really like it. Finally, we are almost done now. We just have the inside, front, and back covers to do. So let's go back to the front first and do the inside front cover. This is super easy because I have a fun little mechanism that's gonna go here. So all we need to do right now is the base page unit, right, which goes back here. It measures uh, seven by six, okay? So I'm gonna go ahead and glue it. I'm gonna save the fun little element. I talked about it briefly in video number two. It's a pop-up element from my card making days and um, it's super fun and I think you guys are really gonna love it. But I'm gonna save it for the walkthrough and then after I do the walkthrough video, I will have a fourth video up sharing how to make that pop-up element for anyone that would like to do it. It's really easy, it's really fun, but I'm just so excited to share it with you guys and I hope you love it that I'm just gonna save it for the walkthrough and then I'll do a video after that. So you can see, you'll see that in the walkthrough. And then this is the little strip that goes uh, on the pocket which measures seven by two. So for now, this is all we're going to do on the inside front cover. Again, I will explain and even do a video on the little mechanism that you'll see in the final walkthrough. I think you'll like it. I hope you like it. It's fun and it's so easy to do. And if you're a card maker, you probably already know how to do it. Okay, now we're finally on our inside back cover. We have seven by six again, so the same size for the actual little base page part. 
So let's go ahead and get that down. Okay, that's gonna be this. Beautiful. Okay. Alrighty, just evening lining that up. All right. Now we can go ahead and remove the score tape backing on the short sides of the pocket like we've been doing all day. Okay, so now we want to do our waterfall mechanism. Now that we have our design paper down, we have the ability to go ahead and do that. Just add a little glue to the top there. Oops, I don't think I squeezed any out. Just... <laughs> okay. Alrighty, so what I want to do is go ahead and bring over, remember when we were constructing the book, I had you cut these for the waterfall and then just put them aside. So bring these little waterfall mechanisms back out and we're going to go ahead now and adhere them to the design paper. Now I'm going to just roughly just dry place mine quickly here just to make sure that they are going to fit how I want them to fit and uh, it's just a double, a triple, quadruple check just to make sure everything is going to look really nice. All right. Yeah, that looks really good. I didn't want it to interfere with the pocket. I still want to be able to put things in the pocket, so that's why I only did four of them. However, you could certainly do more and make them bigger if you wanted to. You can customize this to whatever you would like. I'm going to actually turn my book over now, and I'm going to line the first little waterfall up with the ribbon. Remember, I'm going to have a ribbon closure for this waterfall, so I want to make sure that I kind of have the center of the waterfall at the center of where I put that score tape. And then I am lining this up with the top of the design paper that we just laid down. All right, I'm gonna go ahead and tear the backing off now. And I moved it a little bit with my finger on accident because again, today is just a cursed day where everything is going to lay down crooked. Okay, there we go. Now you'll wanna burnish these with your bone folder, of course. And now you go and do the next one and butt it up right against that half of an inch. Um, I accidentally hurt that little hinge there. Line it right up against that half an inch gusset there, okay? So we're gonna do the same thing. I'm just gonna tear off a little bit of the score tape backing. I'm gonna stick this down before I tear off the rest of the backing, I'm going to fold this down, make sure it's even. It is. So I can go ahead now and remove the remainder of the score tape backing. And now it's nice in place and it's nice and straight and even with the top. We're going to do this two more times. Same exact way. So just butt it up against the little half inch gusset. Line these up. See, I had it a little crooked. That's why it's always helpful to fold the, uh, the top ones down so you can make sure everything is nice and even. Okay, so now that it's even, I can tear the remainder of the backing of this score tape off. I'll give it a nice burnish with my bone folder. And now we have the final one to do. Same method again. Just go ahead and take a little bit of the score tape backing off. And then we'll fold these down just to make sure that they're nice and even. They are. So I'm going to go ahead and tear that off. Okay. So that's what it's going to look like. This one is a tiny, tiny, tiny little bit off. I know you guys are probably freaking right now. Don't worry. It's okay that a little bit of that design paper tour because it's going to be covered up. I just, this was just a little off kilter here. Let me see if I can fix it. It was just the tiniest little bit off. I, I doubt you could even notice it on camera, but it was bothering me enough to want to fix it. So let's burn, re-burnish this again. And now we're done. Okay. So now I can flip our book back in the correct orientation. You'll probably want to go through and just keep burnishing this so these lay down nice and flat for you. Okay. And now what I want to do is I want to grab my 3 eighths of an inch score tape and I'm going to put a little bit of tape if I can find <laughs> there it is and I'm going to put a little bit of tape right on this top 
waterfall element about an eighth of an inch from the end. Okay, so it's lined up with this one. Now before we lay any design paper down, we need to add our ribbon. I chose this beautiful ribbon, so I'm just going to go ahead and kind of cut it in half. Again, I always cut more than I need. It's just something that I do. You guys are probably much better at guessing and measuring than I am, so you probably don't need to cut this much. But this is from Scrap and Create. Again, another f f freebie that they threw in my package. And I'm going to go ahead and just tape this ribbon down. Okay, and then we're gonna do the same thing on the pocket where we have this other piece of score tape. Okay, give it some burnish. Now, we're gonna go ahead and decorate and then we'll, cut, we'll, we'll tie our bow and cut our ribbon. All right, so let's go ahead and do the pocket first. So I'm just gonna pull this up. This pocket strip measures seven by two. Okay, so let's go ahead and get some glue on the back of this. And then we will go ahead and stick this down. So pretty. I just love this paper. Mm. So vintage and unique, I think. All right. So now I've gone ahead and cut different colors of, of uh, design paper for the front. And then I've just used coordinating cardstock for the backs. So you'll see what I mean in just a minute. So this is just gonna get taped right on top of that ribbon, okay? Right on top, right on top, right on top, okay. Okay, that looks good. Now flip this up, and I'm just gonna put some cardstock on the back, and I'm just gonna do pink on the back. Then I'm going to do this one next. Again, these are just little strips that I have cut you from scraps. By the way, these measure um, three by four and you will need eight of them. You can do design paper on both sides if you have the design paper to do it. I did not, so that's why I'm using the cardstock. Next, I'm going to use this piece here on the front. some cardstock up here on the back of this one as well. We'll use blue for that. Okay. All right. Now I can flip this up and I'm going to use pink again up here. this one I'm going to just use this piece here again all eight of these pieces will measure three by four so a nice three by four photo can go right on top or you can crop it down a little bit so that some of the paper is showing around the photo whatever you choose to do and then we're gonna flip this up oops okay I see. when I fixed this one I accidentally glued it on top of this one so now I have to pull this up, and I know you guys are all cringing, but it's okay. This, is, this ripped piece is going to be covered, okay? Don't worry about it. See, I'm showing you how to fix any mistake you may make, because they are all fixable, I promise. I know when I was first starting out, if something like that had happened and the mechanism wasn't working, I probably would have just thrown my hands up and thought this isn't going to work. I'm going to have to completely redo this page or maybe throw the book out. I mean, I'd be all dramatic. <laughs> and what's great is as you get more comfortable with making these, you realize that um, you really can fix anything. It's very forgiving and nobody's going to know about your mistakes. Except, of course, you guys who are watching all of this on camera. But... <laughs> Uh, most of you probably aren't filming yourself making the mistakes, so no one will ever know. <laughs> All right, and then I'm just going to put some blue cardstock on the back here. 
Now what I will do before the walkthrough is I'm going to put little strips of design paper on these gussets just to make it look more finished. And so those will measure four by quarter of an inch. I just haven't cut those yet. All right. So this is what this page, this inside back cover is going to look like. Let's go ahead and give, go ahead and tie up our little bow here. I just thought this would save some magnets and it's just really such beautiful ribbon and I thought it went lovely with this collection. Um, really brings out some of the light pinks, I think, in the collection. I'm going to go ahead and trim the ribbon now and I'm going to save the excess because I like to put ribbon at the top of my tags. And you'll see all that in the final walkthrough. Okay, so this is how this stays closed with this pretty ribbon. All right, so let's go through really quick on what we've done. Again, I always do the covers last, and there's a lot of stuff that I have to do for my covers, so I'll just show you the cover in the final walkthrough. Um, I showed you the pieces earlier of paper that I, that I saved for the cover. Here's our inside front cover. Here's page one. Remember, we left this open to slide things in. Tuck goodies or tags or journaling spaces or whatever you want. So that is page number one. Page number two is here. We have this beautiful ribbon closure. Open, open, and this flips up. Okay. And again, you have this beautiful pocket here on top. I'm just gonna close this really quick so it stays out of our way. We have this little flap over here with a pocket, and this, and this, and this. Okay. Here we have this, and this, and this. <laughs> I'm just doing a quick little run through here. To show, kind of summarize what we've done here. So pretty, I really love how this turned out. I hope you guys love it. This one is very simple with this pocket here. And then this one here with the pocket. This flap, this flap, little pocket up here. And then we just did the waterfall, so I'll leave that bow in place. So that's it, guys. That is part three of this tutorial. Make sure I will link below, of course, in the description box will be all of the measurements for today's uh, design paper, as well as links to the previous tutorials, as well as a link to the walkthrough. Alrighty, so I will catch you in the next video. I really hope you love this project. Thanks so much, guys. Bye-bye.